Hello and welcome back to Realm of Thrones and I just want to say that there still is zero war declaration so I'm actually kind of wondering whether I need to enable or disable static wars because that's one of the settings that I've had issues with in the past. I I'm a little bit weirded out by it because I'm pretty sure that the north should at least be at war against someone, you know, the Westerlands or something like that. It, uh, it, it, it a little bit boggles the mind, so I'm not entirely uh, convinced what's happening here, but there we go, nice little hit right there. Now, obviously, I do have a quest to be able to eliminate this bandit base at the moment, and hopefully that is going to provide us with a significant amount of cash. Obviously, here's the thing, I'm, I'm going to have to be kind of careful here, because on the one hand, I really, really want to, uh, you know, prevent the Red Wedding and everything. But I also have to be careful about um, my own troops. I have to be very, very cautious about that. Because if I'm not, then we're going to have some big, big issues. And, oh, hello. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, oh, they're, bo they're both going for overheads. So that's actually quite funny. That's perfect for me. I'm just going to have to get my guys to come over here. Thankfully, I have a good shield now. Because my shield, obviously, is making it so that I don't actually take super hardcore amounts of damage. So as you can see right there, I was able to just weather it without any issues whatsoever. If they had axes, this would have been a completely different affair. Um, now, unfortunately, I have run out of javelins. I absolutely love using thrown weapons in this game. They are so incredibly satisfying. But, yeah, as I've said... I personally feel like the way that the AI blocks and dodges and all that stuff is just absolutely terrible now. But, you know, that's that's just it. It's, it doesn't really matter. Either way, you know, as long as we can win on the field of battle, that's actually all that matters. But the one versus one combat is dramatically less enjoyable. But it doesn't matter, as I say. It doesn't matter. It Whatever they want to do, you know, basically, <laughs> whatever, whatever the uh, the creators of Bannerlord want to do, that's that's just how it is. Anyway, we are otherwise going to hopefully be able to complete this because here's the thing: without any kind of war and without any kind of mercenary situation on our hands, we don't currently have the ability to really, uh, shall we say, sustain ourselves that dramatically. Because obviously, as you might expect. If you have a growing army, you know, if you have a growing army and you have one caravan up and running, I mean, I do, I do have one caravan as far as I'm aware, unless he was eliminated without me realizing it. But generally, um, if you have a caravan, then you should have a little bit of passive income as you are running around and doing whatever else you need to do. However, when you become a mercenary, it makes everything so much simpler because what you're trying to do is you're trying to generate as much influence as possible to be able to afford the very punishing daily wages. Uh, I personally am not a huge fan of the daily wage because I mean no no offense right now but who actually pays daily? I mean really I highly doubt that uh, that my forces are like you know holding out their hands and being like yes pay me Pay me on the dot every single day at 6 p.m. or whenever. I highly doubt that that's, that's the way it used to be or that's the way it is. You, you know, back in, back in these times. I highly doubt that. Um, and if it was like that, then I have no idea what they were doing. I have no idea what they were thinking, to be honest. Because from my perspective, I personally feel like a weekly basis makes much more sense just in general because it's not a waste of time because obviously just think about it imagine you have an army right imagine you have an army that is i don't know 200 men strong right 200 people in your army and then all of a sudden oh this is an amazing wow okay wow okay this is this is pretty crazy all right very nice indeed obviously it's not going to sell for that amount but it's really really nice that we've we've gained that just now um, yeah, so anyway, we also have a bandit elimination quest. And I believe I'm supposed to eliminate forest bandits. I don't think robber knights count. I'm actually not entirely sure about that. I guess we're going to get to see that in just a moment. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's been done. Yeah, so as you can see, yeah, no, no, they do count. They do count. Okay, that's fantastic. So I can basically just go into this other hideout here 
if I want to, and then we'll be um, we'll be pretty good. But yeah, as I was saying, basically, if you think about this and think about the fact that you know most armies, uh, well, most relatively large armies are going to be about I don't know, as I say, two hundred people. Why would you literally go and pay them? Why would you why would you sacrifice your efficiency, sacrifice your you know your time? when you're on a campaign and pay them every single day. Can you imagine the logistics of that? That is just so... Why? You know, that just doesn't make any sense, in my opinion, in comparison to, uh, you know, paying them weekly, because weekly is just, it makes all the sense in the world, because you're literally going to be able to, um, you know, set aside a little bit of time to do that. In a realistic situation, you're going to set aside some time, of course. Um... You know, from a gameplay perspective, I'm I'm going to assume that the only reason why they switched from a weekly to a daily is just to make it more punishing. That that can be the only uh, that can be the only thing that I can really think of, because from as I say from my perspective, I felt like weekly was fantastic, and I'm not even talking about. I mean, yeah, sure, okay, there were definite things that people could do to sort of maximize their. Um, should we say their, their wage reductions? Because, uh, you know, you could do a, a wide variety of different things in Warband, for example, that would actually reduce your wages. And if you wanted to take note of your, uh, you know, payday, you know, every single week, if you wanted to know exactly when that was going to happen so that you could employ these measures to reduce your wages, which, in my opinion, I have no idea why you'd do that, because in the base game of, of Warband, it is very easy to make a lot of money. Um, you know, win a tournament here or there, invest the money in, um, you know, enterprise or two, you're done. That's basically what you need to do. Um, but in uh, in Battlelord, that's obviously not the case. You know, they, they make it a lot more difficult. They, like, they make it uh, kind of illogical because if you think about the fact that, you know, daily wages... I mean, you're going to be getting drained every single day, and it's going to be unstoppable. You ca you cannot stop it for any reason. And the uh, the amount of times where I thought to myself, hmm, it would be so much better if I had a weekly wage right here, because if I had a weekly wage, I'm ob I'm obviously not going to do any of those any of those strategies to reduce my wages every single week. I don't see the point in those things. That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, why would I? you know, go inside a garrison, for example, to reduce my wages. And there we have it. Very nice. Look at that. We did it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, obviously we, uh, oh, do we need to train some troops or, uh, do, do, oh, no, we, we already trained those troops. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I was thinking that we still had that, but no, no, we didn't. Okay, so that's really nice. We've done both of those quests and now we are back up to 14,000. Now, my daily gold change is actually doing pretty well right now, only because we have a caravan. If I had two caravans, that would obviously make everything much, much easier. But yeah, one, one thing I'm actually very much hoping that we can do is become a mercenary now. I have no idea whether that's been changed, but as you can see, look, the North is quite clearly at war against someone. Yeah, I mean, look, he's escaped from captivity, so I'm going to assume that there is, in fact a, uh, you know, a, a little bit of something that we can do, maybe. Maybe we can join them as a mercenary or something like that. But yeah, basically, to underpin everything of what I've been saying about daily wages, I personally feel like daily wages are awful and weekly wages are much better, just because, well, for a variety of reasons that I've already stated. Anyway, I'm going to actually see here. Can I? Yes! There we go! We can finally become... A mercenary. I'm going to get 80 gold. Wow, that's actually really, really little. Um, I was actually kind of hoping for a little bit more than that, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There we go. All right, there we are. Fantastic. All right, so we can't marry Caitlyn, of course. Or can we? I don't think we can, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think she's married to... Uh, she's married to someone else, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, that's what I always found quite funny, actually, because here's the thing. I'm not a big fan of Sansa, okay? I'm not a big fan of Sansa. I don't know about you. Not my thing, not my thing. But I'm actually kind of thinking, uh, someone actually did say, they, yeah, I think you left a comment about, um, 
you know, various eligible bachelorettes, shall we say, in the Northern Territories. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to look up one of those in a future episode and we'll try and see whether we can um, marry them, uh, you know, potentially. Ah, Your here health. we go. Hello there. OK, you're only 483. That's actually super, super nice. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to get another, uh, as you might expect, we're going to get another person that will uh, run, a, run a caravan for us. And uh, there's no upgrades actually here, which is actually quite funny. But um, yeah, we can probably just get rid of all of that. We can get rid of all of this as well. There we go. Um, okay, so we are pretty nice right now. And I think... Hmm, this is almost 7,000. Can I actually find something else that I could sell here? I'm going to sell this because I have no idea what it does. I know it's some, some kind of like healing potion or something like that. I don't know. But I'm just going to get rid of it for now because I, I just I, I can't be bothered to find out how it, how it works. But what we're going to do is we're going to get a caravan here. Here we go. Yes, she's going to become the caravan person. And we also have an escort merchant caravan mission. So we're going to do that as well because this is actually one of the best ways... As I've said before, I mean, generally, these are absolutely amazing ways that we can uh, make some cash. Um, but because we are now a mercenary, this is going to make things even better. Like, so much better. Because if we do this, and we actually fight these raiders, we're going to get a significant amount of influence in the meantime. And that's going to provide us with, you guessed it, even more cash. So what we're going to do, uh, I actually have no idea about the throne skill here or one-handed. Personally, I feel like we level up way too slowly, but maybe that's just me. And I'm thinking I might go for charm here because the 30% increased influence gain from battles could be really useful now that we are a mercenary. So I'm going to do that. And then we're just going to go in Wait, against the raiders. Here we go. All right. So this is, uh, should I just, wait, wait, wait. I should just check to see. If, oh, no. Okay. No one leveled up. Fantastic. Yeah. Good to know. All right. So because these guys are basically just ransackers and various other bandits, we are more than likely not needing to really use any particular strategy. But I am going to try to distract some of them, as you might expect, because these guys, well, as you can as you can see, they are actually really, really nice for us to use our thrown weapons against. I'm actually just going to do a little bit of something here. Going to tell these infantry to charge in here. Going to try to kill a couple of these guys in the process too if I can nice there we go let's get out my spear do some damage nice come on now can I get some more that is all I need that is all I need thank you very much maybe we can actually uh, you know what maybe we can actually survive this you know I actually don't know have we survived our previous battles I can't remember I can't remember but I think I think we're we're doing all right aren't we I think we're doing all right so if I can just survive a little bit here and get some experience, I'll be pretty happy. Obviously, it's not the same as in Warband where you, you know, kill someone, you get some experience. No, 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 you're going to have to level up your uh, your skills in uh, sort of Elder Scrolls style to be able to level up. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute. Let's see if I can get a... Ah, nice headshot right there. Very nice. Very good. That is what we like to see. And now if I can actually defeat these guys, it might even make sense for me to have a smaller army just to get more influence, but I'm not sure if that actually makes it that much of a difference. Because obviously we're, we're facing 40 enemies here. I need to make sure I don't take too much damage either, by the way. That's going to be a uh, pretty big issue because obviously we're going to be fighting quite a few troops, quite a few groups of troops, shall we say. And uh, we don't really want to get ourselves in a situation where we have to auto-resolve. Because that's going to be terrible. That's going to be one of the worst things that can happen. But, if my new companion can actually go and do what she's supposed to do. And actually make some money. And, uh, you know, get to a point where she can actually, you know, contribute rather significantly to our overall economic strength then we're going to be good. We're going to be absolutely fantastic because as we can currently see, our uh, other caravan is apparently doing very well. But look, look at this, look at this. 12 influence right away right here. 12 influence, absolutely fantastic. That is exactly what we needed. And we can also take these prisoners, of course, as well. And look, look at this, look at how much experience we just gained. Wow, 
That is so dramatic. Look at that, 2100 actually to upgrade. Wow, that might be a bit too much. Maybe I shouldn't do that because otherwise I'm going to have to spend even more on wages. And well, yeah, you've already got my comments on that. But yeah, that's uh, maybe... Maybe it's not a good idea. <laughs> Maybe it's not a good idea. I don't know. I mean, that's a funny thing. I really actually do need to check the kingdom screen because we need to see who we're actually... At. We're at war against the veil. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think that's actually kind of weird. I don't think that should be happening. I think we should be at war against the Westerlands. I'm actually just going to check the options real quick. Oh, and apparently that was it. That was literally the end of the escort quest. Which I think is absolutely hilarious. Okay, that is very, very funny indeed. Well, it's fine because we could just, you know, sell all the stuff that we had there. There's 2.3k from that. We can also sell our prisoners. We can also get another companion here if we want to. This is just another generic one. Um, but yeah, that's the point. Do we want to do that? I don't know. Do we want to do that? Probably not. Probably not because... If we do that, then we're going to just have to pay him more. Ah, yeah, Stout Defender is obviously what we want to go for, but not because of the battle morale, but because of the plus 50% recruitment rate of Tier 4 prisoners. In my Bannerlord perk tier list, I rated this very, very high, just purely because being able to recruit Tier 4 and above prisoners at a faster rate, that, that literally can save you. That literally can save you and allow you to stay in enemy territory for a vastly longer time than if you were to, you know, uh, use the other one. Use Fervent Attacker. So, yeah, it's really, really good. And uh, if you haven't seen it already, by the way, I have a, uh, a four, I think it's four hours long. Mm, yes, it's a four hours long Bannerlord perk tier list. So if you're interested in the Bannerlord perks, then, well, there you go. You can just literally, you know, put that in the search. Bannerlord perk tier list, my name, and then boom, there you go. It's probably going to come up. Anyway, well, we're going to go and do another one of these because these are obviously, as I've said before, one of the best ways that we can earn um, influence basically for free. We don't even need to, uh, you know, we don't even need to look for enemies. They just come, from, come to us, which is great. Um, the main problem, however, is that... Is that my guy? That's my guy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so unfortunately, uh, my one of my caravans has just gotten eliminated by the Veil. And uh, yes, by the way, the result of me looking in the options menu, would you like to know what it was? Yes, Static Wars is disabled, which is exactly what it should be. There uh, shouldn't be any issue with that. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. I have no idea what the uh, what, what the problem has now been with, uh, with the North actually attacking the Vale. That makes no sense whatsoever, but I guess... Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some weird thing is happening. I, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, we can actually try to do some damage here. Nice. Yeah, we're doing pretty nicely with our thrown weapons as well. Not too bad. And hopefully, just hopefully, I'll be able to get a couple of kills with my spear as well. Nice. That guy literally just ran into that. That was literally his damage. Did you see that? That was his damage doing all of the work. Because before that, I was literally stationary. I was pretty much stationary. I couldn't do anything. You know, I had been slowed to a crawl. And there was no way that I would be doing any damage to him. But he ran into the point of my spear and that was all she wrote. So, very nice to see that. Okay, now all we need to do is uh, eliminate the rest. And let's actually tell my cavalry to charge it. I don't even... Do I have any cavalry? Yeah, I've got, th I've got two. I thought I had three, but no, we have two. I think I'm one of them, to be honest, aren't I? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, we are able to kill these really, really simply as well. But obviously, here's the thing. Basically, any time you can get any skill whatsoever is a good day. Because, you know, at that point, you're going to be leveling yourself up. You're going to be gaining more focus points. Uh, for me personally, I feel like focus points are mm, maybe a, lot, a, a little bit less enjoyable to use and to apply than skill points, you know, from, from Warband. Because here's the thing. When you... When you level up in Warband, you gain a skill point, you gain a, an attribute point. 
and you're able to spend it in whatever you want. And you can do this every single time you level up. In Bannerlord, obviously, you don't gain an attribute point every single level. You gain it every three or four, right? Four, I think, every four levels. And that's that's harsh. I, I feel like that's pretty harsh. So it makes it so that you have to be very specialized in what your character is able to do. So in other words, most of the time, if you want to be good at combat, you're only going to be focusing on control, on strength, on, on endurance, and that's basically it. You're not going to be focusing on anything else. Um, and that, it's kind of sad, really. I feel like it's kind of sad because most of the time, the player would like to do something else, in my opinion. I mean, I personally would like to do something else. I'd like to do um, any number of things. Like, I'd like to do trading, for example. I like to do trading, or I'd like to do, uh, you know, charm skill, leadership, whatever. And that's the point. I cannot level intelligence or social at all unless I want to sacrifice vigor and control. And so as a result, I'm going to be basically like a jack of all trades, master of none kind of deal, which is obviously going to be kind of sad. I'm going to use well prepared here, even though the minus 20% accuracy penalty with throwing weapons while mounted is actually pretty good. But I personally would prefer the plus one ammunition to throwing weapons just so that I can get more kills with it. That's actually the only reason. Otherwise, we're going to probably be taking, uh, yeah, we're going to be taking Braced right here. 25% chance of dismounting enemy cavalry with a heavy hit. That is always good. And as you can see, look at this, we got an attribute point. Speaking of attribute points, so um, yeah, so attribute points, as you see, you gain one free attribute every four levels. And so that basically means once you get to level 20, you get, you, you've got five attribute points. So you can spend those any way you want, obviously, but most of the time is it gonna be is it gonna be impactful is it gonna be impactful at all i don't know that's the question i mean you can see here the difference between these two look at this the learning rate of leadership is 7.25 and the learning rate of throwing is 8.75 so in other words 1.5 difference and there are only three attribute points difference in other words attribute points provide us with what you guessed it yeah 0.5 it seems 0.5 uh which is basically nothing but it, it makes a difference it makes a difference in the end because if you want to get to 275 in weapon skills or in any skill that is um then you're going to need at least seven as far as i'm aware i think you will need seven in these skills to be able to make that work i'm going to spend a point in control skill because i actually want to level up my thrown weapons just that much faster i'm actually probably going to be going for another point in thrown weapons as well another point of focus that is for thrown weapons i find them way too fun to not do that and we're just going to go in for an auto resolve here against these guys i'm just going to take these guys prisoner thank you very much and yeah there we go oh yes we're getting some nice loot from those robber knights um but yeah it should be pretty easy for us to get these guys dead and we're going to be getting some decent influence as well from it but unfortunately these robber knights are quite a bit less shall we say influence gaining than the larger parties because we gained about 12 influence for the other guys and there you go that's it wow these are really really short escort merchant caravan missions i gotta say these are really, really short. Anyway, I'm going to be selling the prisoners for 745, which is actually pretty good, surprisingly enough. And we are then just going to be selling every single piece of loot that we have here for a small amount. It's not going to be amazing, apart from the sword. The sword is obviously really, really quite nice. And as you can see, that's the reason why we're actually getting 4,600 here. But do you see exactly what has happened? Exactly what, what has changed? What has changed about my situation? Well, actually nothing to be honest. Actually, nothing. We're just getting really, really lucky with our tasks because the Escort Merchant Caravan mission is literally one of the best things that you can do. Like I just said, you know, if you have an army that can handle the uh, the bandit parties and, um, you know, obviously we've also done a couple of other things like we have, um, you know, <laughs> eliminated two carav uh, caravan hideouts, no, two bandit hideouts. And that obviously makes a big difference as well because they usually have some pretty decent uh, gear in there from the, uh, the ill-gotten gains, as it were. And look, there's actually a siege going on at Sisterton right now. Shall we go over there and actually see if there's anything that we can do? Shall we try to interfere a little bit? I personally feel like this is probably not the best idea. Um, yeah, as you can see, they're actually... 
Yeah, they're going to lose. They are going to lose like no one's business. Oh, oh, wow, that was close. Okay, I actually almost got murdered right there. That would not have been fun. No, that would not have been fun. Yeah, so as you can see, look at that. Wow, they, they all got absolutely murdered. I am extremely surprised that they're even at war against them. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. I think that's kind of weird. Um, but uh, who, who am I to say? I don't know. Who am I to say? Maybe maybe they uh, maybe they annoyed each other somehow. I have no idea. But yeah, anyway, there's Northern Helmet 2 available for a reward here. This could be good for us. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of doing tournaments, as I've said to you multiple times. I personally feel like the whole AI thing, I feel like it's not done the game any favors. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just bad. That's probably it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the point is... We are ho hopefully going to be able to... Wow, that guy had no idea. All right, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, I see, that's a funny thing. Okay, now don't get me wrong. I'm happy to have some challenging gameplay. I have no problem with challenging gameplay, but I do have a problem with enemies that act like machines. That's literally it, you know? Because if this guy literally blocks me every single time I press left mouse button in the exact direction that I'm going to attack, then that just makes no sense. And I'm talking about every single time. I'm not talking about them making mistakes or anything like that, because making mistakes is obviously human. I know, I know, I know a thing or two about mistakes. So, you know, I'm actually kind of surprised I'm breezing through this so easily. Uh, it's just kind of strange. I don't actually know why that is. Usually, I, I may, ah, it's because there's no nobles here. It's because we're not fighting any nobles. Now this might be a little bit more difficult. Okay, well, uh, let me just see here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I need to get a little bit further back for the sweet spot of the attack. Wow, okay, I'm actually super surprised. I never would have expected to win that, that, that easily. But there you go, we did gain six renown from it, because of our charm skill, of course, which uh, is actually pretty good, <laughs> if you think about it. You know, we literally, what, spent, what, two minutes? Two minutes doing that? I, I have no idea. And as a result, my, uh, my clan has advanced to clan tier two. So now we have an even larger, um, even larger party, which is actually very nice. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be recalling Malono here, because he's obviously um, been, uh, you know, been captured and his his caravan is basically doing nothing at all. So I'm just going to go in for the nice little auto resolve here. Good amounts of loot as well. <laughs> and that's basically it. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm just literally going to be running around here and doing as well, trying to do as much damage as I can and uh, trying to earn as much influence as possible. Because as you can see, the mercenary contract is so little uh, i mean it, it, it's giving us 80 gold per influence point which is uh, it, all intents and purposes actually not even bad but because my my wages are so dramatic now because my forces have leveled up quite significantly we're having some issues sustaining it so i'm not sure how that's really going to go i was kind of hoping that my caravans would survive a little bit longer but it's a bit weird that that the Vale has declared war, like I said. The, the Vale declaring war, that is a really weird situation to be in. And uh, I'm actually also very surprised. I'm not going to be recruiting this guy, actually. Um, yeah, I'm actually really, really surprised that the Red Wedding event hasn't happened yet. So I think one thing that I'm going to try to focus on in my off-screen time is I'm going to level up my one-handed skill, and I'm going to try to do that by going into these bandit hideouts and just trying to solo them. I'll try to solo them myself. I'll try to go in there with the express desire to level up one-handed and that's it. Because as you can see, my one-handed is 64, which is really, really low. So if I can level that to about 100 or maybe around 80, 90, that might be okay considering I have a pretty fast sword as it is. And when we are gonna go in to you know, deal with the whole, deal with the whole Red Wedding issue. We're most likely going to be equipping that in our civilian slot. I believe it can be equipped in the civilian slot. Yes, it can. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.